Hello guys, welcome to this video. So ever since uh, Shri Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of India, his focus has been on launching a lot of government schemes, reaching out to the poor, reaching out to the marginalized people. So in this video, we are going to see some of his ambitious schemes and also the schemes of Government of India and also some schemes of the state governments as well. So welcome everyone to this video. I am Dipanchu Singh. Uh, you know, I'll be guiding you through uh, and taking you through along uh, with all the important government schemes uh, of the government of India, as well as uh, the of the state government as well. So before we begin and start dealing with individual ministries, uh, first what we have to look into is what is referred to as the restructuring of the government schemes. Now, actually, in 2016 budget, it was announced that each scheme that has been launched will have a sunset date. Meaning that uh, in the beginning itself, uh, when the scheme will be launched, uh, you know, it will be decided till when the scheme will run, it will have an end date. And also at the same time, it will have midterm reviews. Basically, you know, after a certain period, probably say like five months, six months or within a, a year, there will be midterm reviews. Like after if a scheme is launched for, let's say, three years, there will be a midterm review after 1.5 years to see the success rate and the implementation of the scheme and whether you know it should be continued or not whether you know it needs certain changes as well so this was you know further announced into then 2016 uh, because earlier uh, there were a lot of schemes there were too many schemes uh, which did not yield desired results because of two basic reasons so these were the two major reasons first was a bureaucratic mindset uh, because the tendency of the bureaucrats were that you know they should focus more on budgetary allocation so their focus was on uh, you know uh, maximizing the budgeting tendency and budget maximization tendency at the same time uh, the other issue was of duplication of efforts because there were no coordination among the various schemes and various ministries and various department so in all ye jo scheme hai inko restructure kiya gaya 2016 mein unki end date decide ki gayi midterm review bhi kiya jayega schemes ka aisa decide kiya government ne and uh, jo unhone reason bataya ki aisa karna isliye zaruri tha kyunki kai sari scheme thi jo uh, jo jis purpose ke liye unhone launch kiya gaya tha wo purpose nahi uh, solve kar pa rahi thi and wo desired result nahi pa pa rahi thi uska reason ye tha do major reason bataye gaye uske liye first tha bureaucratic mindset jo bureaucrats the uh, unka bas tendency ye hoti thi ki koi scheme agar acha nahi kar rahi hai to zyada se zyada budget usme dal do kyunki zyada kharcha hoga to shayad zyada तर करी स्कीम तो इससे भी कुछ फायदा नहीं हुआ और दूसरा इशू जो था वो है डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ एफर्ट की मल्टीपल एजेंसीज वही काम कर रही थी बिकॉज किसी भी काम को करने के लिए देर वॉज अ लैक ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन कोई प्रॉपर कोऑर्डिनेशन नहीं था अमंग दी वेरियस स्कीम्स इंटरलिंकिंग नहीं थी अमंग वेरियस स्कीम जैसे आज के टाइम में अगर आप देखें द स्वच्छ भारत मिशन हैज बीन इंटरलिंक विद अ लॉट ऑफ स्कीम्स यू नो इवन रिलेटेड टू हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन यू नो क्लीनिंग ऑफ विलेजेस क्लीनिंग ऑफ अर्बन एरियाज रिलेटेड टू हेल्थ एज वेल तो ये ऐसा कोऑर्डिनेशन पहले स्कीम्स में लैकिंग था जिसकी वजह से इन रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग ऑफ स्कीम्स के बारे में सोचा गया so now the number of schemes are being reduced and under the upa government there were 147 uh, centrally sponsored schemes in com css bolte hain and in 2013 uh, the upa government also reduced this to 66 so 143 say to, to 66 pe number aa gaya and then in 2014 uh, the nda government and uh, you know added six more centrally sponsored scheme leading to a, a total of uh, 72 centrally sponsored scheme फिर 2015 में क्या हुआ इन 2015 नीति आयोग कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड अ पैनल अंडर द चेयरमैन चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ शिवराज सिंह चौहान हु रेकमेंडेड दैट यू नो वी शुड रिड्यूस दिस सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड स्कीम्स टू ओनली 27 and therefore based on the recommendation of shri shivraj singh chauhan and the panel consisting uh, under his chairmanship the government is now restructuring these centrally sponsored scheme now sometimes there is a question that uh, a lot of you might ask ki what is the difference between a centrally sponsored scheme and a central sector scheme theek hai ek hota hai centrally sponsored scheme ek hota hai central sector scheme to so centrally sponsored scheme mein kya hota hai basically in the css there is a division of uh, the budget between the central government and the state government so isme 60 40 uh, 75 25 okay for special for special category states the ratio will be 90 to 10 and for hilly states the 90% of the fund will come from the central government and 10% from the state government in central sector scheme the complete funding is provided by the central government to usme state government ka funding ka koi role nahi hota there is no uh, uh, you know budget or money allocation from the state government in terms of central sector scheme so this is the main difference between the centrally sponsored scheme and the central sector scheme 
Now, how is this restructuring being done? So now schemes have been classified into three types. Now, this is very, very important for your prelims examination, especially the upcoming examinations. And also you can use this your upcoming mains examination as well. Prelims ke liye to bahut important hai. To isme sabse jada important baat ye hai ki jo main schemes hai aapki, jo jinko hum core schemes bolte hai, usme bhi ek, ek aur level bana diya gaya, core of the core jisko naam diya gaya. So total there are six schemes under the core of the core criteria so inko top most priority milti hai and sabse zyada budgetary allocation hota hai uske baad then you have at the second number is your core scheme jisme you have around total 18 schemes which are a part of the core schemes of the government of india then you have your optional schemes and optional schemes mein you have your only total three schemes ab inko optional kyo bolte because not every state will require this kind of scheme so it is also very state specific now, if you talk about the special category states, so in all there are 11 total special category states. Jin may say out of those 11, you have your 8 as northeastern states and plus 3 are the Himalayan states and these Himalayan states are of Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir. Abhi recently there was a controversy of controversy by uh, Shri Chandra Babu Naidu, the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, where he was demanding for a special category status for their state. Uh, you know, uh, but then uh, since the central government declined, he basically pulled out from the NDA government. So as he demand for uh, you know for the special category status because funding jo hoti hai, uski wajah se, jasa maine bata hai, if you are under a CSS centrally sponsored scheme ke andar ho, or agar aap special category states ke andar aa jate ho, so 90% of the funding uh, is given by the central government and only 10% is to be paid by the state government. So they are at a very much advantage. Now if you talk about uh, which is our next point is the funding pattern of the schemes. So for core of the core schemes, for general category states, it is the existing pattern which share hota hai. So and for special category state, it is the existing pattern which abhi share hota hai, 90 to 10 ka. Now coming to the other part, that is the second category, that is the core scheme. For general category states, the, the, the funding pattern is 60-40. That means 60% of the fund will be given by the center, 40% by the state. And for special category, it is 90% by the center and 10% of the funds have to be given by the state government. Now for the optional schemes, because optional scheme, not every state requires this scheme. For general category states, therefore, the, sh the sharing is on a 50-50 basis, meaning that 50% of the funds will come from the central government and the rest of the 50% have to come from the, or have to be borne rather by the state government itself. And if you are a special category states, uh, then 80% will be borne by the central government and 20% funds have to be given by the state government under the optional schemes. Now we will look into that which all uh, schemes are a part of this core of the core schemes which highest priority milti hai, and then kaun si schemes jo hai core, jo, jo core scheme ki part hai, and then we'll see optional schemes and then we'll start with individual ministry wise uh, important government schemes uh, for uh, from the government of India and also the state government which is important for examination. Now if we're talking about the core of the core scheme, first is your Mahatma Gandhi Narega National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, so that is the most ambitious program of the government. So it's the important scheme hai uske liye because it, it leads to infrastructure development, it leads to employment generation and kafi zada iske linkages hai and kafi benefits hai. Then is your National Social Assistance Program, so this is basically a, this is, this is basically a scheme which is for your senior citizens, widows, etc. Then all the umbrella schemes, it comprises all these schemes for scheduled caste, so all the schemes for scheduled caste have been you know, uh, basically compiled into one. Then similarly, all the umbrella schemes for scheduled tribes, uh, all the umbrella schemes for OBC, and also all the umbrella schemes for minorities and all the schemes for minorities are therefore clubbed into one. So these six schemes, six schemes in the sense that all the schemes under the, uh, you know, uh, for protection of SC, protection of ST, uh, protection of OBC have been clubbed into one. So, jitni bhi schemes thi, jo inse related thi, unko sabko ek mein club kar gaya, ek individual scheme bana gaya. In total, six jo government of India ki schemes hai, wo core of the core schemes ki category mein aati hai. Next is your core scheme. So, core mein aapke aati hai, Green Revolution, Krishi Unity Yojana, Rashtri Krishi Vikas Yojana, White Revolution, Rashtri Pashudan Vikas Yojana, that is uh, your livestock mission, veterinary services, the dairy development, blue revolution is for fisheries development. Uh, similarly, you have your Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sachai Yojana for irrigation and micro irrigation, accelerated irrigation benefit and flood management program that uh, uska naam aapka abhi dala gaya har khet ko pani. Then per drop more crop again related to irrigation, integrated watershed development program. Uh, similarly, continuing with it, we have the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, which is, has been one of the most successful schemes of government of India. Then National Rural Drinking Water Mission. Then you have your Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, which has a rural component as well as the urban component. Next, you have the National Health Mission. 
so it also has a rural component and urban uh, mission as well. Then you have your National Health Mission, Human Resource, Human Resource and Health and Medical Education. Then you have a National Health Mission which is linked with your Ayush Mission, mission as well. Then you have the Rashtriya uh, Shastra Suraksha Yojana, so this is basically Shastra Suraksha Yojana for health protection. Then you have your National Education Mission, so there is Sarv Siksha Abhiyan, Rashtri Madhimik Siksha Abhiyan, Teachers Training and Adult Education, Rashtri Uchitar Siksha Abhiyan. Then you have your Midday Meals Program, Integrated Child Development Schemes, so these are core ICDS schemes. Then also your new recently launched uh, National Nutrition Mission is a part of it, uh, Maternity Benefit Program Scheme for Adolescent Girls. Uh, integrated child protection scheme then you have your pradhan mantri avas yojana again which has a rural component and urban component as well then schemes related to forestry and wildlife as well like national mission for green india integrated development of wildlife habitats uh, conservation for natural resources and ecosystems urban rejuvenation missions like smart cities and amrut mission uh, modernization of police forces is also part of it uh, even your infrastructure facilities for judiciary and your one of the most famous as well that is the mp lad scheme or the member of parliament local area development scheme is also a part of your core schemes so up the we have core of the core schemes and core schemes or last major classification had that is your uh, optional schemes or optional jaisa maine bataya isko kyu bolte hain because all the all not every states need them so isme jo teen schemes hain mostly wo hai border area development program so obviously ye un states ke liye useful hai jo jo border karte hain neighboring ko international borders share karte hain ya fir national river conservation program and so also for developing your rural areas on the line of urban uh, you know development so cluster based approach rahega under this shama prasad mukherji rural mission so not every state will require these schemes so that is has that is why the funding pattern is uh, not similar to the other schemes and also they have been uh, now named as optional schemes so till now we have uh, dealt with the restructuring pattern of the government of india schemes now we will begin with uh, ministry wise schemes so the first ministry that comes to our mind and is you know forms the base of our economy is your agriculture so therefore we will be dealing first with all the schemes related to ministry of agriculture very very important for our examination point of view so the first scheme which is coming under this is your pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana one of the most ambitious program for prime minister modi and also uh, very very important in terms of crop insurance so uh, there are a lot of associated benefits with the scheme so we will deal with them and what are the associated issues as well so the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana these are some of the highlights which you can actually go through taken uh, you know uh, and recommended by the niti ayog so if you talk about the features of uh, pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana so in, in 2018 budget actually the government uh, has said that they are likely to increase the budget allocation for pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana to almost rupees 13000 crores from 2018 uh, 9 for 2018 19 year uh, from 10700 crores at present in the current financial year now the main aim of this scheme is to provide uh, comprehensive insurance coverage against crop loss and it is compulsory for farmers availing crop loans to ye bahut important baat hai ki jo farmers jinhone loan liya hua hai uh, unke liye scheme compulsory hai uh, jin farmers ne loan liya hua for notified crops in the notified areas and जो जिन जिन क्रॉप्स के लिए बताया गया है कि आपको फसल बीमा योजना लगेगी उस उस क्रॉप्स के लिए अगर आपने लोन लिया हुआ है तो उन फार्मर्स के लिए इट इज़ वेरी मच कंपलसरी दैट दे हैव टू यू नो कम अंडर दिस प्रधानमंत्री फसल बीमा योजना एंड फॉर द वॉल्ट्री है फॉर योर नॉन लोनी फार्मर्स तो अगर किसी फार्मर ने लोन नहीं लिया है उनके लिए दिस स्कीम इज़ वॉल्ट्री सो इट इज़ वॉल्ट्री फॉर नॉन लोनी फार्मर्स now the premium rate is that there is no capping in premium and one premium rate on pan india basis so this is basically a premium which is to be paid by the farmer so they just have to pay 1.5% for rabi crop for kharif crop they have to pay 2% premium and for annual horticultural and commercial crops 5% premium just have to be paid by the farmers rest of the money is has to be paid by the government as a subsidy to these uh, financing uh, insurance companies now again there is no upper limit on the government subsidy so the difference between the premium and insurance charges uh, charges you know will be paid by the farmer right and uh, losses jo covered hai ye kafi important hai because ye aapke prelims mein question aa bhi chuka hai pehle so non preventable risks such as natural fire storm hail storms cyclone and inundation flooding ho jati hai has also been included as a localized calamity localized calamity kyun bola hai yahan pe why it has been mentioned specifically as a localized calamity because uh, generally jo uh, damage assessment hota tha damage assessment which was uh, to be done previously was based on village level now it is done on individual farm level as well now also very important is that in prelims 2016 they asked this question and it was mentioned in the multiple choice that 
uh, even your post harvest losses are also covered now important thing to note in this is that if the damage to the crop is by wild animals uh, if the damage is done by wild animals it is not included under this not included ye thodi chaukane wali baat hai this is very surprising because a lot of animals actually uh, you know uh, destroy the crops of farmers and therefore we have to what we call resort as killing them by you know shifting those animals into vermin category vermin is under the wildlife protection act of 1972 uh, so you move them from schedule to another schedule uh, so example of this is your neel guy theek hai so this is how you link your different topics right so wild animals was not included so how do you uh, you know prevent that you basically start killing those animals uh, legally you know after you take a sanction so neel guy your uh, monkeys and langurs are included in this so this is just an example to give you an idea now uh, under this also there will be a cluster approach will be adopted uh, under which a group of districts and uh, variable risk profile will be allotted to an insurance company so also important thing to mention over here is that private insurance companies are allowed theek hai isme it's not that that only uh, public sector or government uh, insurance companies are allowed even private uh, insurance uh, companies are allowed under this and there will be a cluster based approach which will be adopted uh, under uh, you know under this Uh, with a variable risk profile so there will be a risk profiling for different areas and it will be you know specifically then allotted to different insurance companies ab isme uh, technology ka bahut use hoga there will be use of remote sensing technology smartphones drones to assess the damage of the crop theek hai for quick estimation of crop losses uh, taki jaldi settlement ho sake ensure early settlement of claims and also one of the important things that would always a lot of people actually miss out and it's not mentioned specifically in, in, in most of the areas that there will be an exemption from service tax liability of all the services involved in the implementation of the scheme so jo bhi services lagengi isme implementation of the schemes mein those will have a tax benefit from service tax and how does it differ from the previous schemes like national agricultural insurance schemes and modified uh, national in, uh, agriculture insurance scheme isme dekhte hain so ye table hai that will basically help you out in uh, understanding the difference between nais mnais jo previous scheme thi so premium rates jo the uh, national agriculture insurance scheme mein they were low in this it was very high but then it is now in the uh, as you as already seen it is in the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana it is also lower than even the national agriculture insurance scheme now one season one premium so this was applicable over here as well but it is not applicable over here and it is applicable over here as well so ek season mein sirf ek hi type ka premium dena padega aapko now insurance amount cover is full cover diya jayega modified mein aapko full cover nahi milta tha again in this present scheme there will be full cover लोकलाइज रिस्क कवरेज नहीं था यहाँ पे यहाँ पे द लोकलाइज रिस्क कवरेज वॉज ओनली फॉर हेल स्टॉम एंड लैंड स्लाइड बट देन इसमें भी हेल स्टॉम एंड लैंड स्लाइड एंड इनडेशन जो है दैट इज अ फ्लडिंग ऑल्सो हैज बीन इंक्लूडेड एज अ लोकलाइज रिस्क कवरेज नो मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज दैट पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट लॉसेज कवरेज वॉज नॉट अंडर एन आई एस and it was only for coastal areas under modified national agriculture insurance scheme but it is included for coastal areas for cyclonic and seasonal rain as well right and uh, use of technology is there was there in nais but it was not that much in the modified national agriculture insurance scheme but then it has been made made, made mandatory under the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana so that was the first scheme one you know, of the most ambitious scheme of prime minister modi now we move on to another very important scheme of ministry of agriculture that is the soil health card scheme now soil health card scheme was launched in 2015 in rajasthan now this card basically informs the farmers about the nutrient status of the soils along with the recommendation on appropriate dosage of nutri- nutrients to improve the soil health and fertility to card hoga कार्ड में इसमें मेंशन हो के आएगा कि उसकी जो खेत है उसकी खेत की जो सॉइल है उसकी सॉइल की न्यूट्रिएंट स्टेटस कैसा है अलॉन्ग विद दैट इट विल हैव रिकमेंडेशन कि कैसे न्यूट्रिएंट्स ऐड करने हैं वेदर यूरिया ऐड करना है फॉस्फेट ऐड करना है पोटेशियम ऐड करना है सो so, न्यूट्रिएंट की रिक्वायरमेंट क्या होगी बेस्ड ऑन दी टेस्टिंग जो डन किया जो टेस्टिंग होगी बाई योर सॉयल लैब ठीक है सॉयल लेबॉरटरी होंगी सॉयल हेल्थ लेबॉरटरीज टेस्टिंग करने के बाद दे विल बी सबमिटिंग दिस यू नो प्रोवाइडिंग दिस हेल्थ कार्ड टू द फार्मर्स सो दिस विल बेसिकली हेल्प इन नोइंग अबाउट दी न्यूट्रिएंट लेवल ऑफ दी सॉयल ऑफ दी फार्मर्स नॉट द कार्ड विल बी इशूड वंस इन एवरी थ्री ईयर्स ऐसा नहीं है दैट एवरी ईयर इट विल बी इशूड एंड टू अ फार्म सो दैट द न्यूट्रिएंट डेफिशंसी कैन बी रेगुलरली डिटेक्टेड एंड इम्प्रूव now the aim is to basically uh, provide this card to all the 120 million farm holdings by december 2017 and in the first phase uh, of the scheme uh, that was from 2015 to 17 100 million soil third cards have been distributed 
and the second phase began on May uh, began on May 1st 2017 and it will continue for the year from 2017 to 2019 now the scheme is being implemented in collaboration with state government with 50 50 share you know sharing of the funding pattern the 50 percent is coming from the uh, central government or 50 percent jo paisa aa hai that is coming from the state government right now uh, these are other the other two schemes as well so this is first is your paramparagat uh, krishi vikas yojana so paramparagat matlab ki aapke old age aapki organic techniques theek hai so it is to promote your organic farming theek hai and the products will be linked with the market now, it will be implemented again in a cluster based approach and the farmers will be funded to meet the expenditure from farm to market so the expenditure bear karna padta hai farmer ko while moving the produce from their uh, you know farm to the market that will be compensated and also there is no liability for farmers for expenditure on the certification so jo certification chahiye hota hai basically organic produce ko sell karne ke liye so that certification ka jo kharcha ka jo bojh hai that exp- that the burden uh, on the farmer will not be there that will be the liability of the government and the respective bodies right so this is important in that sense next is your small farmers agriculture business consortium sfac now the scheme basically aims to support new ventures in agro based industries and also they will promote the farmer producers organization and their integration in agricultural value chain now isme kya hai there will be venture capital assistance assistance so people venture capitalists jo hote hain they will come and assist uh, under this scheme and they will uh, also uh, help in the project development facility to support the new ventures or new initiatives uh, in the agro based industries so isme beneficiaries can be your individual your farmers your producer groups your uh, partnerships uh, uh proprietary firms self help groups and companies etc as well so these were the other schemes now we come to another important one uh, this was also very much highlighted also came in prelims 2017 examination as well so uh, this is about the enam or e national agricultural market rashtriya krishi bazar so uttam fasal uttam inam iska ek mode aapki tag line keh sakte hain aap hai so it is basically a pan india covering all of the india electronic ta- trading portal which networks the existing apmcs ab apmcs aapke kya hai they are agricultural produce market committees to har state mein ek apmc mandis hoti hain and they are governed by these respective state acts isliye central government isme zyada kuch interfere nahi kar pati hai because every uh, state government has their own individual apmcs now this will basically link these uh, existing apmcs uh, apmc mandis Uh, to create a united or unif- unified national market for agricultural commodities now it is basically a virtual market or an online market to ek tarike ki online market hai jahan pe khareed hua khareed farokht hua karegi of uh, your uh, uh, commodities of the farmers or, or the goods of farmers and it is connected to a physical market but you know it will be connected to a physical market that is your mandi at the bank end and promotes genuine price dif- discovery sabse bada advantage Uh, the biggest advantage of launching this was to remove the middlemen or intermediary jisko bolte hain jo man mane daam se uh, farmers ke produce ko bechte the jiski wajah se farmers ko utna paisa nahi uh, uh, mil pata tha now the funding is uh, by the agritech uh, infrastructure fund which is set up through the small farmers agri business consortium jisko humne pichli slides mein dekha abhi to wahan pe aapko maine bataya tha that venture capitalist basically help in uh, funding under this project so koi bhi naya agro based industry set up karni hoti hai so usme this sfac helps now the license is uh, there will be a liberal licensing of traders and commission agents by the state authorities and there will be one license for a trader which will be valid across all the markets so licensing ka bhi koi issue nahi hoga like, jaise bar bar uh, you have to approach the government officer for you know different license across different states so it will have one pan india license for all the traders that can basically uh, you know will be valid across all the markets in the state and market fee so there will be a single point levy on the first wholesale purchase for the farmer so ek bar bas fees lagegi for the first whole, uh, wholesale purchase for the farmer implementation basically it's a central sector scheme it is not a centrally sponsored scheme theek hai central sector scheme jaisa maine aapko shuru mein bata diya tha central sector scheme complete funding is done by the central government now if the states which are willing to enact suitable provision in their apmc act for integration uh, you know with the e platform uh, you know are more than welcome then you also have your soil testing laboratories available in the mandis itself to farmers ko kahin dur jaane ki zarurat nahi hai agar unhe soil health cards banwane hain to wo bhi in mandis apmc mandis mein available rahengi soil testing laboratories where the farmers can basically get their soils and get them tested and again get the uh, nutrient information of the soil through a soil health card Now, in the budget 2017-18, the government has announced a mission to link 580A5 mandis to the portal by March 2018. As of now, around 250 markets have been covered, and an assistance of up to rupees 75 lakh has been announced for every E-NAM market.
right? Now, coming to another one, so National Food Security Mission, so it was launched to enhance the production of rice, wheat, pulses, coarse cereals and commercial crops such as cotton, jute and sugarcane. Now, don't get confused with the National Food Security Act. National Food Security Act is a different mission and uh, it basically is, uh, you know, uh, was, uh, was you know, and the act is administered by the Ministry of Consumer Affairs. That is related to your PDS distribution, public distribution systems related uh, that you have to ensure 3 kg, 5 kg rice, etc. So that is altogether a different scheme this is a different scheme this is your national food security mission that is national food security act so a lot of people get confused in this as well so don't get confused now the targets under this is basically production of rice wheat and pulses have to be increased by 10 uh, uh, million tons for rice, rice 8 million tons for wheat and uh, 4 million tons for pulses and for coarse cereals by 3 million tons as well Funding again 50-50 by the central government and state uh, for the food crops and 100% cent, uh, center funding will be for cash crops. So cash crops will be 100% for central government and 50-50% uh, sharing uh, for the other crops, uh, for the food crops between the central and the state government. Now it will be implemented through cluster demonstration, distribution of high yield seals with farm mechanization and there will be also integrated pest management as well. So these are the important components of National Food Security Mission. Now another scheme uh, which is important is your Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana. So the main objective of the scheme was extending the coverage of irrigation. That's the most important fact. And also improving the water use efficiency. Now this is very important. Apart from that, end-to-end uh, -end solution on source creation, distribution management, field application and extension activities is also an important part of the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana. Now it was formulated by amalgamating ongoing schemes. So इसमें all already कई सारी schemes थी जो साथ में चल रही थी उनको merge कर दिया गया, amalgamate कर दिया गया. इसमें पहली scheme जो थी जिसको merge किया गया that was accelerated irrigation benefit program, which was under under the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. Next जो scheme थी जिसको which was merged with this with this was the integrated watershed development program, which was under the Department of Land Resources, Ministry of Rural Development. And the third one was the on the farm water management, or which was under the Department of agricultural and cooperation now the implementation of this uh, will be on a decentralized manner through state irrigation plan and district irrigation plan so it's my state governments go uh, in, in you know uh, initiative lane clear so the state governments have to you know develop their state irrigation plan which will be a combination of different district irrigation plans which will be drawn up in different districts and that will be you know combined to form the state irrigation plan which has which has to be then submitted to the central government now all the structures created under the scheme will be geotag geotag basically जो भी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेटअप किया गया उसकी फोटो खींच के उसका उसकी लोकेशन के हिसाब से उसको टैग किया जाएगा थ्रू द सैटेलाइट एंड द स्टेट एग्रीकल्चरल डिपार्टमेंट वुड बी द नोडल एजेंसी फॉर द इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ दिस प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना तो स्टेट एग्रीकल्चरल डिपार्टमेंट नोडल एजेंसी ये याद रखेगा एग्जाम के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से ना दिस प्रोजेक्ट वुड अंडर द प्रोजेक्ट अंडर दिस स्कीम विल बी स्क्रूटनाइज बाई दी स्टेट लेवल प्रोजेक्ट स्क्रीनिंग कमेटी सो ये जो स्टेट लेवल प्रोजेक्ट स्क्रीनिंग कमेटी है दिस विल स्क्रूटनाइज each and every project under Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana and, the and it will be sanctioned by the state loving sanctioning committee which is already set under the Rashtri Krishi Vikas Yojana. Now a state will become eligible to access the funds under the scheme only if it has prepared the district irrigation plan. So if the district irrigation plan is not made and state irrigation plan is not made and submit it until it has been done, the state government cannot access the fund under the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana and uh, also, the state government have to focus on increasing expenditure in their irrigation sector in the state plan as well. So, ye kuch criteria hai to avail the state fund, uh, the, the funding of uh, the central government under this. Now, what is the funding pattern currently? So, the funds will be given to state as 75% grant by the central government and the remaining 25% is to be borne by the state government. So, 75-25 criteria hai for the special category states and the northeastern states that comes down to 90 as 10. 90 will be as terms of grant and 10% has to be contributed only by the special category or northeastern states now this is basically a drip irrigation system so how you know uh, it works basically you have a controller that controls the timing and then you have a reducing tea which reduces the amount of water so you have your individual pipes and then pipes basically have a dripper installed so that you know uh, there's a, a drip of water that passes through and there's a plug as well and there's a you know air uh, ventilation system as well so I will show you a video which will give you an idea of how this system basically works so these are the different components of your uh, you know uh, 
if your uh, irrigation system of your micro irrigation system so screen filter your uh, you know water tank air release valve so these are all a component of this then you have this main line uh, passing through it and uh, then you know uh, this connects it through your farm so and then you know this is how you know this system works so the water comes from tube well go inside you know at under this filtration tank so that filters the water from any impurities etc and then it goes through the main pipe and then you know it will be distributed across the whole farm in you know you know and this will start your sprinkler system or your drip irrigation system so also you can use your sprinklers along with this as well and also you will also you can use your drip uh, you know system as well so you will see how this drip system works uh, you know uh, under under this uh, uh, in this machine or this basically this setup so uh, this is a very beautiful video which i found online so i thought i'll share this with this you so this is how your drip system works so you, you you know give drop by drop water which actually helps in you know prevention of uh, weed as well so that you saw was basically how a drip irrigation system works a very important component of pradhan mantri krishi sachai yojana now we will deal with another scheme which is the national initiative on climate resilient agriculture so this will basically help in enabling the farmers to you know uh, become resilient to climate change so this mega project has basically three major objectives of strategic research technology demonstrations and capacity building so it was launched by the indian council of agriculture research in 2011 now it aims to make farmers self reliant by use of uh, climate resilient agriculture technology and management of natural in man made resources for sustaining agriculture in the era of climate change to so climate change ke dauran mein jo bhi uh, issues hain usko kaise deal kare farmers and self reliant kaise bane farmers aur climate res resilient agricultural technology kya kaise bharpoor fayda utha sakte hai farmer wo main uddeshy rahega is scheme ka so it has four components uh, strategic research on adaptation and mitigation uh, technology demonstration basically on how they can adapt and cope with the current climate variability in 100 vulnerable districts that have been identified also the focus will be on capacity building and sponsored competitive research to fill the critical gaps right so the next scheme is krishi vigyan kendra so these are basically agricultural extension centers created by indian council of agricultural research to provide various type of farm support to the agricultural sector now it was created to serve as a single window mechanism for addressing the technology needs of farmers so jo bhi technology needs hai farmers ki uh, usko address karne ke liye krishi vigyan kendras have been set up and uh, it basically acts as a link among the researchers extension functionaries like ngos and farmers as well so it it basically tries to link the uh, you know farmers and the ngo and civil society and the farm also supports uh, uh, include the farm support basically includes uh, farm advisory services like advisory service related to the farm and including climate resilient technologies uh, also training programs uh, for ngos and the front line demonstration on the farm testing and on farm testing of technologies as well now they operate under the administrative control of the state agricultural universities or the central institutes right now the next is mera gaon mera gorav so this is a scheme uh, you know envisages scientists to select villages so this is important that the scientists will select villages and they will provide information to the farmers on technical and other related aspects so it basically includes scientists uh, you know functioning at various centers and institutes of indian uh, council of agricultural research to so, jo icr ke scientists hain which have been functioning or working under under the various centers and which are also working with the state agricultural university so they will basically go and select villages they will provide training to the farmers on these technologies on farm related technologies and they will also provide information to farmers on the technical related aspects they may function with the help of either the krishi vigyan kendras or the agricultural technology management agencies now next is your rashtriya krishi vikas yojana so this is an ongoing centrally sponsored scheme so this is a css scheme which was started from the 11th five year plan period uh, this has been approved to continue as the rk vy renumerative approaches for agriculture and allied uh, sector rejuvenation or rk vy raftar uh, so this has been ex uh, for extended for 3 years from 2017 to 2020 and uh, this scheme will basically incentivize states uh, uh, you know states in enhancing more allocation to agricultural programs for investment in agricultural and allied sectors uh, so focus will be on you know uh, the, you know uh, you know uh, to achieve the growth rate of 4% 
and will provide the flexibility and autonomy to state uh, in planning and executing programs in different agriculture and allied sectors. And the funds would be provided to the states as 60-40 grants. So 60% by the center of states and 90-10 is which is basically for the special category states and the Himalayan states. And the allocations under this, this uh, are based up on the state plan expenditure for agriculture sectors, which is determined based on the average expenditure incurred by the state government during the three year prior, prior uh, to the previous year. So basically what it means is that the allocation hoga jo bhi under this uh, you know uh, under this uh, the uh, uh, under this program will be based upon the state plan on expenditure so state ne kitna kharcha kiya hai on the agriculture sector in the past uh, previous 3 years so unke state government ke plan ke basis pe is pe funds allocation kiye jayenge and the preparation of the district and state agricultural plans is mandatory and encourages convergence with other programs such as an anarega that is the mg narega so jaisa maine bataya tha the focus of the present government is also on interlinking a lot of your government schemes like mg narega ko kaise link kar sakte hain with your agricultural schemes as well with your health related schemes as well with your swachh bharat mission as well right so this may be focus again will be on the interlinking programs such as narega etc now uh, it will also uh, uh, strengthen the farmers efforts through creation of agricultural infrastructures that help in supply of quality inputs market facilities etc it will also further promote agri entrepreneurship theek hai ye bhi important component hai to ye confusing ho sakta hai isko yaad rakhiyega that it will also promote your agri entrepreneurship and it will support business models that maximize return to farmers now there are subtle sub schemes under the rashtri krishi vikas yojana to uske andar kuch sub schemes hain jaise ki bringing green revolution to eastern india additional fodder development program safran mission uh, crop diversification program livestock health and disease control food and mouth diseases bee keeping and targeting rice fallow areas now next is pandit deen dayal upadhyay unnat krishi shiksha scheme so it was launched to promote agricultural education uh, under the scheme 100 centers are opened with a fund of rupees 5.35 crores uh, and attaining uh, attracting and retaining uh, retaining youth in agriculture which is called as arya is basically a project which is sanctioned by the indian council of agricultural research and is being implemented at the krishi vigyan kendras now the main objective of this project has basically been to provide complete knowledge and education and skill on processing uh, value addition and marketing of coconut and banana specifically so these products focus has been on these products uh, will, that is basically through capacity building programs involving research and development organizations so basically agricultural education provide karne ke liye scheme ko launch kiya gaya hai focus isme raha hai on marketing the coconut and banana products the next is your e rakam so e rakam ka full form hai basically e rashtri kisan uh, agri mandi now ye thodi bahut similar lagti hai with your e nam but there's a very big difference between uh, the e nam and e rakam however uh, much clarity has not been provided from the central government as well so this is basically a digital platform uh, portal which enables farmers to sell their agricultural product through auction now this is basically meant for only for small farmers they have they basically can sell their produce online through this e rakam portal ठीक है एंड दे डू नॉट इवन नो नीड टू गो टू द मंडीज लाइक ए पी एम सी मंडीज विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ ई नैम सो ई नैम में योर फिजिकल मंडीज आर इंटरलिंग इसमें कोई फिजिकल मंडी का एक्जिस्टेंस का कोई रोल नहीं है दिस इज बेसिकली डायरेक्टली फॉर द फार्मर एंड द मनी इज डायरेक्टली गो यू नो गोज टू द बैंक अकाउंट ऑफ दी फार्मर्स विदाउट एनी इंटरमीडियरीज नॉ वेरियस यू नो ई रकम सेंटर्स आर बेसिकली हैव बिन डेवलप्ड एंड सेटअप अंडर दिस to facilitate farmers for online sale of the products across the country and CWRC which is a subsidiary of the Central Warehousing Corporation Limited will provide logistic support for the seller and buyer in case they need it so ek bar khareed liya so transportation ka kharcha jo produce ka from the farmer to the buyer and to the seller will be taken care by the CWRC which is basically a subsidiary of the Central Warehousing Corporation Limited now this was recently launched a project chaman so this is basically for horticulture so it is basically a project to provide strategic development to the horticulture sector so as to increase the farmers income so farmers can basically you know earn a lot of uh, you know revenue and money uh, by focusing on horticulture along with your food crops like vegetables you know uh, uh, fruits etc uh, so chaman which uh, basically full form stands at coordinated horticulture assessment and management using geoinformatics so this project is being implemented by mahanabolis uh, national crop forest center uh, in new delhi using remote sensing technology so isme focus rahega on using your uh, satellite and remote sensing technology and is likely to be completed in the march 2018 so this is a project in which remote sensing technique is be used for strategic development of the horticulture sector so to increase the farmers income is the main purpose and uh, the methodology is basically for you know preparing reliable estimates for horticultural crops now the income of the farmer will increase by growing selected crops in the high highly suitable areas identified under chaman in the current jhumur wasteland so isme 
फोकस रहेगा कि जो करंट वेस्टलैंड है या जूम कल्टीवेशन जो आपके स्लैश एंड बर्न एग्रीकल्चर फॉलो किया जाता है इन सर्टन रूरल एरियाज और फॉरेस्ट एरियाज सो उन एरिया पे कैसे सूटेबल क्रॉप्स कैसे हॉर्टिकल्चर क्रॉप्स को ग्रो किया जा सके हाउ दीज क्रॉप्स कैन बी ग्रोन दीज हॉर्टिकल्चर क्रॉप्स कैन बी ग्रोन इन दीज एरियाज सो दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड दैट डेटा विल बी प्रोवाइडेड एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन विल बी प्रोवाइडेड थ्रू योर रिमोट सेंसिंग टेक्नोलॉजी and besides this the post harvest damage of farmers would be significantly reduced by creation of a desired post harvest infrastructure like cold storage etc thereby increasing their income as well so isme cold storage development pe bhi uh, post harvest infrastructures ke bhi development pe focus rahega so that the farmers can basically save uh, prevent their damage of their horticultural crops in addition the geospatial data studies like crop intensification orchard regeneration and aqua horticulture would further help the farmers to grow their horticulture crops in a profitable manner which will help in doubling the income so they can basically use uh, you know this information to grow fruits as well like in orchard regeneration they can do crop intensification growing multiple crops at the same time doing intercropping also aqua horticulture meaning you know they can uh, you, you know also do fisheries you know uh, along with your uh, you know development of Uh, you know a breeding of fishes along with your uh, horticulture so that will also help in doubling the uh, income of the farmers now national program on use of space technology for agriculture so this is again using uh, you know information from the space technology this is npsta so this is a proposed program which envisages uh, integrated use of space and geospatial tools for mapping monitoring and management of agriculture uh, the current uh, running program will be subsumed under this are the project fasal this was basically used for crop forecasting similarly project nadams basically was for the drought assessment project chaman jo hai wo usko bhi subsume kar liya gaya hai under this npsta and project kisan jo hai jo abhi humne padha uh, you know or chaman also is subsumed under this and also crop intensification planning because anyway they are using the data for uh, you know remote by remote sensing for uh, development of that area uh, in the sense that how, which area is most suitable for cultivation of a particular crop so since chaman was only dedicated for horticulture now you know that that has been subsumed under this npsta uh, you know uh, to basically also help for other purposes as well like drought assessment uh, for crop insurance as well and the program will have four sub programs such as crop assessment and monitoring theek hai so ye ye component hai agricultural resource management dusra component hai disaster monitoring and mitigation and satellite communication and navigation application is the other aspect of this program now mission finger link so as the name suggest is about your fisheries development so the mission aims to achieve enhanced fish production in the country The mission aims to achieve the target to enhance fisheries production from 10.7 million metric tons to 15 mmt by 2020-21 under the Blue Revolution Scheme. So, in this, the potential states will be identified to strengthen the fish seed infrastructure and also uh, facilitate the establishment of hatcheries and fingerling rearing pond. Now, the government has identified the 20 states based on their potential and other relevant factors uh, to strengthen the fish fingerling production and fish seed infrastructure in the country. Uh, this will facilitate the establishment of fingerling rearing pond and hatcheries as well. Okay, and the coverage in the in the production of 20 lakh tons of fish annually, which will in turn benefit about 4 million families. And the implementation of this program will supplement the requirement of stocking materials in the country up to a large extent, which is a much needed input to achieve the enhanced fish production. So, its main implementation basically is on on the focus is on basically on the you know stocking of materials that will help in the large extent in you know uh, you know in satisfying the input for the development of the fish seed infrastructure in the country. So, this is basically for enhancing the fisheries sector in India. Next is a national mission on agricultural extension and technology. This N M A E T. So, this mission basically aims to restructure and strengthen agricultural extension. Uh, machineries uh, uh, to enable delivery of appropriate technology and improved agronomic uh, practice to farmers abhi agriculture extension hota kya what do you mean by agriculture extension so this basically refers to application of scientific research and new knowledge to agricultural practices through farmers education now this includes educating the farmers towards cost effective and remunerative mechanized farming for improved productivity and sustainable farm growth so basically it it, it involves a lot of scientific research to help the farmers in provide information about the farm uh, to the farmer through education you know educating the farmer towards uh, you know better use of uh, you know fertilizer cost effective practices remunerated mechanized farming how technology can help him so these are a part of agriculture you know agriculture extension services okay and therefore under the scheme it is envisaged to be achieved by physical outreach you know by person to person outreach उनसे जाके बात करेंगे टू फार्मर्स डायरेक्टली एंड इंटरेक्टिव मेथड्स ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन डिसमिनेशन लाइक यू नो यूजिंग एडवर्टीजमेंट यूजिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन कमीशन टेक्नोलॉजी मैसेजेस भेजना 
रेडियो पे ब्रॉडकास्ट करना एंड यू नो पॉपुलराइजेशन ऑफ मॉडर्न एंड अप्रोप्रिएट टेक्नोलॉजीज अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ क्वालिटी सीड्स एंड प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन एसेट्रा नो इट एमेट्स ऑल द एक्जिस्टिंग एग्रीकल्चरल एक्सटेंशन स्कीम्स एंड रीग्रुप्स इन टू फोर सब स्कीम्स सच एज द सब मिशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एक्सटेंशन सब मिशन ऑन सीड एंड प्लांटिंग मटीरियल सब मिशन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर मेकनाइजेशन एंड सब मिशन ऑन प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन एंड प्लांट क्वारंटीन now next is national mission on bioeconomy so uh, launched in shillong so it was a space specific uh, in a, you know not specifically state specific but then it was launched in uh, shillong meghalaya by institute of bioresource and sustainable development so the key facts related to the scheme are the purpose of this mission was to boost rural economy by utilizing bioresources uh, it can also create a large number of jobs at well uh, at you know as well at the low village level Uh, it also focuses on sustainable utilization of renewable biological resources of food so bioeconomy basically means how do you use these bio uh, biological resources uh, you know for uh, uh, as a, uh, under the sustainable economy and basically the focus will be on using this renewable biological resources for food bioenergy uh, products through knowledge based approaches it has potential to generate new solution for the planet's major challenges in the field of energy food health etc Uh, and also deliver at the same time social economic and environmental benefits to so associated social economic benefits or environmental benefits kaise mil sakte hain by integrating your uh, natural biological resources under this so it is a new concept basically and only few countries like us canada european union and australia have started initiatives in this field and india is also a very fast growing by economy at us 35 billion dollars in 2015 which can even rise to about 100 billion dollars uh, in future राइट सो राष्ट्रीय गोकुल मिशन पे आते हैं सो दिस वाज लॉन्च फॉर कंजर्वेशन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडिजिनस ब्रीड्स इन अ फोकस्ड एंड साइंटिफिक मैनर इट इज बेसिकली अ प्रोजेक्ट अंडर द नेशनल प्रोग्राम फॉर बवाइन ब्रीडिंग एंड डेयरी डेवलपमेंट तो इसके अंतर्गत आता है ये प्रोग्राम जो ऑब्जेक्टिव है मिशन का है बेसिकली द ऑब्जेक्टिव है ऑन द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ इंडिजिनस ब्रीड जो हमारी लोकल ब्रीड्स हैं इंडिया की जो इंडिया में पाई जाती हैं उनके जो ब्रीड्स ऑफ कैटल है उनके कंजर्वेशन पे फोकस रहेगा एंड द डेवलपमेंट एंड द इम्प्रूवमेंट इन देर जेनेटिक मेकअप सो जेनेटिक मेकअप है ऑफ दीज इंडिजिनस ब्रीड्स उन पर फोकस रहेगा एनहांसिंग देयर मिल्क प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ डिजीज फ्री हाई जेनेटिक मेरिट बुल्स फॉर नेचुरल सर्विस तो जो हाई जेनेटिक क्वालिटी के जो बुल्स हैं विच कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड फॉर नेचुरल सर्विसेज उन पर भी फोकस रहेगा नो इट इज बींग इम्प्लीमेंटेड थ्रू द स्टेट इम्प्लीमेंटिंग एजेंसीज दैट इज द लाइफ स्टॉक्स डेवलपमेंट बोर्ड Uh, implemented on 100% grant in aid basis and throughout the country implementation so is through basically on the uh, establishment of integrated indigenous cattle centers like gokul gram establishment of breeder societies uh, that is the gopal and sang uh, they you will also have award given to farmers and that is the gopal ratna and breeder societies kamdenu and there will be also assistance uh, to institutions which are repositories of the best germ plants now next is our national dairy plan one so this is a central sector scheme completely funded by the central government for a period of 2011 to 12 to 2018 to 19 uh, it is basically a multi state initiative with the following project development objectives so kafi sare states involved hain but then the funding is completed from the central government so basically the first aim is to help increase the productivity of milk animals milk animals are the your milk producing animals and thereby increase ultimately is the mil there is the increase in the milk production to meet the rapidly growing demands for milk now india is the largest producer of milk in the world but still we have so much of demand that we are hardly able to satisfy the demands now to help uh, provide rural milk producers with greater access to organized milk processing sector as well so jo rural milk producers hai unko milk processing sector jaise aapke jo dairy products jo banati hain companies unse bhi link karna iska focus rahega now it has focus on development and conservation of indigenous indigenous breed as well so jaise humne bhi gokul mission mein dekha tha similarly isme bhi hai on uh, conservation of indigenous breeds of cattle and buffalo through implementation of progeny testing and pedigree selection program so india ki 6 indigenous breeds of cattle hain gir sahiwal etc and then six buffalo breeds hain mura mehsani jafrabandi so ye sab na ek bar prelims mein already ek bar pucha ja chuka hai about indigenous breed mein uh, aapka ek question 2011 12 mein aa chuka hai so just uh, ek bar bas dhyan de dijiyega bas just you know give it a glance you will remember it uh, otherwise you know no, don't worry if you want you know just uh, mark up the concepts so under this the funding will be through a line of credit from international development association which along with the with you know will the share uh, the funds with the government of india now it will focus on 18 major milk producing states which together account for over 90% of the country's milk production and coverage of ndp1 will however be across the country in terms of benefits accruing from the scheme next is your pashudan sanjeevni so this is basically an animal wellness uh, uh, program uh, encompassing provision of animal health cards so jaise 
सॉयल हेल्थ कार्ड होता था आधार है अब एनिमल के लिए भी एक एनिमल हेल्थ कार्ड ला, लाया गया जिसको हम बोलते हैं नकुल स्वास्थ्य पत्र सो इट इज आल्सो इश्यूज यूनिक आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स इन मिल्क एंड एस्टैब्लिश अ नेशनल डेटा बेस फॉर कंट्रोलिंग द स्प्रेड ऑफ एनिमल डिजीज एंड कीप ट्रैकिंग ऑफ ट्रेड इन लाइफ स्टॉक एंड इट्स प्रोडक्ट्स नाउ नेक्स्ट इज योर ई पशुधन हार्ट पोर्टल सो इट वॉज लॉन्च अंडर द नेशनल मिशन ऑन प्रोडाइन प्रोडक्टिविटी फॉर कनेक्टिंग ब्रीडर्स एंड फार्मर्स ऑफ द इंडिजिनस ब्रीड्स सो बेसिकली इसके थ्रू फार्मर्स को हेल्प मिलती है टू बी अवेयर अबाउट द ब्रीड वाइज इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इंडिजिनस ब्रीड्स एंड दे फॉर इट विल ऑल्सो लिंक योर फार्मर्स एंड ब्रीडर्स दैट कैन हेल्प इन सेल ऑफ एनिमल्स ऑफ इंडिजिनस ब्रीड थ्रू दिस पोर्टल सो खरीद फरोख्त होगी ऑफ द इंडिजिनस ब्रीड ऑफ कैटल्स थ्रू दिस सो दिस पोर्टल हेल्प्स इन दैट नेक्स्ट इज बेसिकली योर क्वालिटी मार्क अवार्ड स्कीम तो जैसे नाम से लग रहा है क्वालिटी मार्क जो अवार्ड स्कीम है बेसिकली क्वालिटी एंश्योर करती है बेसिकली आर टैगिंग स्कीम है एक तरीके से तो नेशनल डेयरी डेवलपमेंट बोर्ड विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनिमल हस्बेंड्री डेयरिंग एंड फिशरीज एज इनिशिएटेड दिस क्वालिटी मार्क अवार्ड स्कीम फॉर डेयरी कोऑपरेटिव्स सो इट इज बेसिकली टू प्रमोट एंड एनकरेज इनहसमेंट ऑफ सेफ्टी क्वालिटी एंड हाइजीन ऑफ मिल्क एंड मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स मैनुफैक्चर्ड बाई द डेयरी कोऑपरेटिव्स now it is aimed at bringing about process improvement in the entire value chain from producers to consumer to assure uh, availability of safe and quality milk to so quality milk mile safe milk mile ye iska main purpose hai also you know promote karta hai ye encourage karta hai uh, enhancement of safety and quality product of milk uh, and hygiene hygiene wala hona chahiye milk and all the milk products uh, jo bhi manufacture kiye jate hain by dairy cooperatives and, uh, and it also ensure the availability of safe and quality milk and products both for the domestic market as well as the foreign market as well now next is your price stabilization fund so it was launched by department of agriculture and cooperation and the ministry of agriculture's objective was to basically safeguard the interest of the growers and provide them with financial relief when price prices fall below a specified level so it was launched in 2003 so this was a basically a central sector scheme so 100% funding from the government central government to basically support market intervention so basically interfere karti thi market mein government jab price control karne ke liye of the perishable agricultural commodities so this will basically be used to advance interest free loans to the state governments and central agencies to support their working capital and other expenses on procurement and distribution uh, interventions for such commodities so jiska price stabilize karna hai to uske procurement aur distribution ke liye ke jo bhi paisa kharcha hota hai of the uh, central agencies and state government usko liye ye paise deti thi government under this price stabilization fund so the procurement of the commodities uh, will be undertaken directly from farmers or farmers organization so directly jo procurement liya jayega jo kharida jayega wo directly farmers kharida jayega ya fir farmers organization se kharida jayega from the farm gate and mandi and it will be made available at a more reasonable price to the consumers to usko aur saste daam pe sarkar jo hai consumers ko degi initially the fund is proposed to be used for onion and potato only now losses incurred if any in the operation will be shared between the center and the states framework and funding agar dekhe to state will set up a revolving fund to which the center and state will contribute equally to and the ratio of the central and state contribution to the state level coppers in respect of the north east will be however 75 25 Now, national mission on bovine productivity so it was launched in november 2016 aim was again enhancing milk production and productivity and thereby making dairy more remunerative to farmers now it is being implemented uh, and with the following components to so, a pehla component hai pashu sanjeevni so it includes identification of animal using uid jo unique identification card hai uh, issuing health cards to all the animals and milk and uploading data on the uh, on the website or uh, the database jo hai inka and advanced reproductive techniques under it uh, sex sorted semen production facility is being created uh, at 10a grade semen stations at uh, these different ivf labs to so, ye again hai for the you know uh, artificial uh, insemination uh, and you know uh, production of uh, these uh, uh, high indigenous breeds and creation of e pashu heart portal is for linking farmers and breeders of the indigenous breeds and establishment of national bovine genomic center for indigenous breed it is established for the enhancing milk production and productivity through genomic uh, selection among the indigenous breed now next is your national mission on oil seeds and oil palm so it basically envisages bringing additional 1.25 lakh hectares under the oil palm cultivation through area expansion approach in the states including utilization of wastelands theek hai to wait for wasteland ki utilization mein focus rahega and increasing the area under the oil palm cultivation objective is basically to expand the area under oil seed cultivation harness the potential in the areas of districts of low productivity strengthen karna uh, inputs delivery mechanism strengthening of post harvest services besides a focus on tribal areas for uh, tree born oil seeds uh, increasing irrigation uh, coverage under oil seeds from 26% to 36% and expansion of cultivation of oil palm oil palm and tree born oil seeds in watershed and wasteland so this was launched by department of agriculture and cooperation now the states currently engaged in oil palm cultivation are andhra pradesh chatisgarh goa gujarat maharashtra mizoram etc and uh, if you talk about india's oil imports so it is very you know rising very steeply 
काफ़ी ज़्यादा डिमांड रहती है फॉर द इम्पोर्ट बिकॉज वी आर नॉट एबल टू सेटिसफाई जो डिमांड हमारी डोमेस्टिक में रहती है बिकॉज वी डोंट हैव दैट मच ऑफ एरिया अंडर कल्टिवेशन अंडर इट इन द पास थर्टीन ईयर्स इम्पोर्ट ऑफ क्रूड एंड रिफाइंड ऑयल वॉज रिपोर्ट हैव टू हैव क्वाड्रपल फॉर फोर टाइम्स एंड इम्पोर्ट यू नो बिल इन दिस रिगार्ड इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू टच फिफ्टीन बिलियन डॉलर्स इन ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन एंड ट्वेंटी Right, so guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Uh, till now, we have done the uh, the government schemes of Ministry of Agriculture. So stay tuned for part two, where we'll be dealing with the schemes of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, and also all the subsequent streams of different different ministries uh, of the government of India. And uh, in case if you don't want to miss out on those videos, do subscribe to this channel. Uh, that is Next IS channel on YouTube. Uh, so you know you can get regular updates of the videos and also press the bell icon which is situated over there so you you know as soon as we upload the video you'll get the notification so thank you so much guy bye bye and take care and happy studying